Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods here on this hump day. And I hope all of you guys are ready for this short week because, see, it's already hump day. We just got back to work yesterday. Today's already Wednesday. It's downhill after this. And here it is today, of course, is a great day for a multitude of reasons. One, you're here. You're here today. Second, the Cowboys are on the field for OTAs today. Of course, we'll have some reporters there. So we'll see a couple of clips. We'll hear a few things about practice. Not a game. Not a game now. We talk about practice. And then, after today... The Dallas Cowboys will get $10 million, $10 million of cap room added to the $13.347 million that they currently have, giving them $23.347 million of money. Now, question is, will Cap Boy, a.k.a. Stephen Jones, did I do that backwards? Stephen Jones, a.k.a. Catboy, do anything with that money? Well, there's some free agents out there that could possibly help. in Anthony Barr, T.Y. Hilton, and maybe because it is June 1st, some veterans could be cut. Um, Deion Jones, linebacker. Now, now here's what's funny, because I, I briefly mentioned that last night. And Stuart Morrison... He ended up texting me back late last night and said, oh, my God, I would love to have Deion Jones. I think he's in some of Stewart's dynasty leagues, that he's an absolute positive beast and a tackling machine. Now, it is a good chunk of change. The Falcons are hoping maybe to trade him so that way they get some cap relief, much like they did Julio Jones last year. So, you know, we have all kinds of dreams and fantasies about the Cowboys bringing in a few more free agents to kind of take us over the hump. In reality, it probably won't happen. But we'll see. The Cowboys do have that money. They may be trying to save it up to try and make some of the future contracts of, um, say, C.D. Lamb, say, Diggs' contracts and stuff down the road. But I'm not so worried about saving this money for them. Because things are always relative. When has the Cowboys not been penny-pinching and worried about the cap? How many times have we gone into situations where they say, oh, the Cowboys don't have money, yet they find the money to sign people when they want to? And understand that we are still living on the money from the cap of the last CBA. The new money for this CBA doesn't start till next year. Right now, we don't know exactly how much that's going to be. But like I've told people before, just the Sunday ticket is doubling the, the revenue coming in. It went from uh, 900 and some odd million dollars to $2 billion. That move alone is an additional $20 million for each of the teams. So as you start looking at that, and you start looking at the money, the salary cap is going to balloon up next year, probably about 30 to $40 million, if not more. By 2024, they're estimating that the salary cap will be somewhere around $400 million. So worrying about paying those guys right now, although it behooves you to pay them sooner than later, because the price doesn't go down. As much as... We, the fans, look at it and say, oh, my God, you can't pay it. You know, and people talk about Dak Prescott's contract where they paid him $70 million last year. The reality is the first year in his contract, the cap number was $18 million. It's $19 million this year. They have triggers and space in there that they can move money around so that way next year's cap number isn't as bad as it looks at the moment. And they can do whatever they want. 
if the New Orleans Saints could be $75 million in the red and somehow sign all the people that they signed and still have the same money as the Dallas Cowboys, you know, you've been basically baffled with bullshit. And that is no joke that they literally are. Oh, I see it. I see it again. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. Let us stray. Run them up. This is what he does. That's what they do. They tell you we can't do it because they just don't want to do it. But be that as it may, <clears throat> the question will be, uh, and, and here's, again, one of these things that we can look at and say, we can adjust contracts. We can work other ones. There's rumors, of course, that the Dallas Cowboys are looking at Zeke's contract, and more than likely after this year, they'll say, Zeke, we love you. We'd like you to be here. We can't afford the number that you have, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to tear up that contract and start all over. And I'm sure Zeke Elliott would rather do that than go elsewhere because his cap number for next year is $16 million. And so they can do what they did with Demarcus Lawrence if he's, of course, willing to do that, knowing that he's already made a boatload of money, and redo his contract where it's not as big a cap number, okay? And Dak Prescott's number of $49 million, they can go through – and basically redo his contract, put another year or two onto it, do extension. You know, there's things that they can do to get money that won't be necessarily that difficult. Basically just taking a pen and just moving money around because that's what you do with the salary cap. In the grand scheme of things, as Russell Wilson gets his contract, as Lamar Jackson gets his contract, as well as uh, Kyler Murray, you're going to see all of those guys well into the $40 million a year mark. At the moment, you know, people still say Dak's too much. But the thing is, is that number is going downhill rather quickly, and it will continue to. And so with Zeke Elliott, there's room there uh, and hope that they can redo his contract where they know that it won't be as much. And here's a little bit news about Zeke Elliott on Get Up this morning. things about Ezekiel Elliott. I know this is kind of a stop me if you've heard this before situation, but the Cowboys believe Elliott looks good, that he has recovered from the knee injury that significantly affected his performance over the second half of last year, and they still anticipate a big role for him. Remember, he's got the fully guaranteed money this year, so he, they couldn't do anything with this contract. If it isn't a great year for him, could be his final one in Dallas. Well, that's interesting. There's some other Cowboys stuff to get to uh, today, including Dak Prescott. So Dak was kind of responding to some of the criticism that his he's received and his team has received and he said talent is one thing but if you don't fulfill it it doesn't really mean anything i'm excited for those guys meaning the players who departed this offseason for them to prove people wrong i know what this team has we definitely didn't take a step back we're going to continue to get better and that's what this offseason is about and that's what moving forward is so those are the things that he's saying in the meantime he might have someone else now that he needs to have a word with and that's our own dan orlovsky who was on twitter this we morning go and tweeted the names of 10 quarterbacks that you win because of. Spoiler alert, Dak Prescott's name is not on this list. You see who they are. Uh-oh, uh -oh. Dominique, go ahead. Uh, representing the Prescott I, family, I, I, go. No, no, I, I love Dan. I'm excited for him to do games this year. I think it's going to be incredibly fun and informative. But this is just foolishness. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how you define this. So the rest of the quarterbacks in the league are causing their teams to lose? Like, it just doesn't make yeah. any sense. Dak is certainly in the class with these other quarterbacks. That's fine. Whether Dan thinks so or not doesn't change the fact that it's true. The, the stats support it. You watch the games that support it. But last year, I think the Cowboys struggled, and they could get better with lesser talent if they improve consistency from Dak is one of the places where they need to improve in late game execution. All that aside, Dan's list is fun. Give us something to talk about in May and June. Thanks a lot, Orlovsky, for that foolishness. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think just in, as far as what he means by it, I think that there is a distinction in his mind and maybe those of others that there are some quarterbacks you win with and others you win because of. Yes. We have this guy, so we are going to win. And Aaron Rodgers is that guy and Tom Brady is that guy. And he's putting together another list. And Lewis, I guess, 
I bring you in on all of this yeah. because because I'm contractually obligated to. <laughs> what, what do you think of Dan's list? <laughs> Look, I, I think every one of those guys that, you know, on that list, those teams have won games become of them. They've also lost games because of them, because of maybe bad decision making and or inaccurate throws or what have you at different points in time. I mean, that's really just a list to really just kind of turn over and talk about. But look, Dak Prescott, you could put on there just as well as you could put Derek Carr in there. Dak Prescott, you could put on there just as well as you could put uh, Russell Wilson on there. Russell Wilson cost his, his team many football games last year with Seattle. He also helped them win some games. Dak Prescott at the first half of last year, we were talking about him being an MVP. Dan Orlovsky, along with many other people, were talking about the fact that this was a guy who at the beginning of last year was playing as well as he had ever played at any point in his career and really had Dallas humming right along. Look, I think what Dallas's issue this year is going to be about this. It's going to be about exactly what Dominique talked about. It's going to be about situational football, clock management, fourth down, whether you go for it or punt type of management. Game management situations mm -hmm. is really where they're going to get a competitive advantage and or be the same old Dallas as they've always been. That doesn't mean that there's there aren't situations or rather areas of their football team that they need to improve and that they may have taken a step back in terms of talent. But yeah. that is really where the competitive advantage is going to come with with them. Nick, you look perturbed. Yeah, because, I mean, it's as if these are players are on isolated teams. We saw what Tom Brady looked like at the end in New England. It wasn't because Tom Brady's a quarterback that you don't win with. It's because he wasn't surrounded with the best talent and allowed to optimize his ability. All these guys are in very good situations. You put them in bad situations, they'll be bad. The same could be said about um, Dak Prescott also. You put him in a great situation, he puts up MVP-level numbers. You put him in a bad situation, he does not perform. Sure. Dan's a quarterback, so he feeds into this QB. Dan's a quarterback. Uh, sports culture that we have, and it's a bit absurd to suggest that these are the type of guys that no matter where you put them, no matter what you sound, surround them with, that they're going to make you win. Grass, finish it. And by Look, I think the post, I mean, like, I think Matthew the, Stafford did not win games in Detroit. Like, like that's yeah, not, like, that's by right. definition, <laughs> he is not on this list. <laughs> that, I, I think, you know, I don't want to get into how you spell Russell. That That's not an issue. But my point <laughs> is, like, I, I, don't, I think there is such a thing as, like, there's a group of quarterbacks you win because of, and there's a group of quarterbacks you can win with. I don't think that the list of these guys is ten names long. No, I, I honestly don't. Look, I, I don't think there's We all love Dan. And then there's Monday Dan. And now oh, there's Twitter, Dan. Monday, Dan. <laughs> wait, wait, Tuesday, Dan. We love <laughs> Monday was a holiday. We love all our Dan's. I Matt, have to Matthew. go. I could do this forever. I mm. love you. Guys, thank you very much. It is once again that time where our Alaska series of hard-hitting providers. Okay. So, Dan Orlowski. See, Dan knows what he's doing. Dan Orlowski knows exactly what he's doing. He's getting you to react. Whether you love it or hate it, Twitter, YouTube, none of these platforms care whether you are coming because you like them or you hate them. The only thing they care about is that you are coming to them. And Dan Orlowski understands. I can be the freaking idiot that says off the wall, stupid shit to make Dallas Cowboy fans react. And guess what? It's got a name for me can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll, we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and take. And I probably am guilty of this. Can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll, we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and take. Now, here's what's interesting when you look at that list. So, you know, we have this thing where people will go through and they'll say, Justin Hubert, you know, he's great. He's better than Dak Prescott. But then the Cowboys went to their house last year and they beat him. The comeback is, oh, well, they didn't make the playoffs last year. They're not a good team. What? What? Wait, what? You look at that list. And it's funny because they say quarterbacks that you can win with. I believe the Cowboys actually played against the Seattle Seahawks in the playoffs. Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott. I believe the Cowboys won that game. Am I wrong? Hmm. Again, it's the offseason. It's silly time. It is... We need something to keep people engaged, so let's come up with some bullshit.
And Dan Orlowski, well, he is truly full of bullshit. The good news is, y'all, last night, the big news in the NFL was it was 100 days until kickoff. And we restarted the clock. And you can see right there, we sit here today, 99 days, 12 hours, 23 minutes, and 50 seconds away from kickoff of the season. And this time tomorrow, it'll only be 98. I hope you guys have a great day. I'm going to be on the road for a few hours and things, but don't worry. We are going to keep you up to speed with everything that is the NFL. I'm Mark Holmes, and you know how we roll. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe for the Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is, how about this,